Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, continuing talking about high order uh, polynomial equations, um, I would like to demonstrate a couple of uh, uh, cases when you really can solve uh, the equation of higher or higher than two order. Um, just a couple of examples which I have here. Uh, what I do suggest to you is, uh, first of all, try to solve these equations yourself. They are in the notes on unizor.com website, notes for this lecture. So try to do it yourself. Whether you do or you don't, successful or unsuccessful, only then um, listen to this lecture. And uh, it's basically about one particular technique how you can solve uh, certain equations. There is no like general formula uh, for solving these higher order equations, as uh, I was talking about in, in the lectures which precede these, uh, this particular uh, exercise. Mm, so basically you have to think about particular case, about some peculiarity, about some technique maybe, uh, or invent your own, whatever, to uh, come up with a solution. So these are three examples of equations which, uh, which have integer uh, coefficients and uh, obvious attempt can be made uh, to find integer solutions. So let me just try one after another. The first one is x cubed minus 7x plus 6 equals to 0. First of all, um, even without going into this technique which I'm going to, uh, to use in, in all these uh, examples, um, I actually can see something uh, right up front, just looking at this particular equation. Now, what do I see? Well, here. 7x can be represented as minus x minus 6x plus 6. Now, why did I decide to do this? Lucky guess, if you want. But actually, I think I see, looking at this, I see that this is something which is the way to simplify the problem. Now, why I see, I don't know. Maybe because of experience, maybe I um, solved probably hundreds of uh, other equations which look like this one in some way or another. And uh, at some points, I basically came up with this particular technique. So first, I'm looking and I'm trying to, 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 to find out, is, is there anything here which reminds me um, some way to ease the problem? And this is actually the way to do it, because obviously, x can be uh, factored out. So I have x squared minus 1. Now, 6 can be factored out. And this is x minus 1 times x plus 1. As you know, x squared minus 1, difference of two squares is difference of the basis times sum of the basis. And what do I see now? I see that x minus 1 can be factored out from both places, leaving x, x plus 1, minus 6 equals to 0. So, obviously, I see there is a solution, x is equal to 1, of this original equation. Now, how about this? If this is equal to 1, this is also uh, equals to 1. So, solutions to this equation is also this. So, x times x plus 1 equals to 6. This is where we are looking for solutions to this equation, where 6 is such a nice number that 2 times 3 would be equal to three uh, to, to 6, right? So I already have another uh, solution, x is equal to 2. And as you know, we have three different solutions for the equations of the third degree in the complex area, granted. So my question is, are there any other solutions? Well, obviously others are when this one of these is equal to minus 3 and another is equal to plus 3. So minus 3 times uh, minus 2 
also equals to 6. So x is equal to minus 3. As you see, I have practically guessed all the solutions of this equation. And it's not because I knew everything up front. Actually, I just kind of thought about x is equal to 1. It's kind of an obvious solution. But I didn't know about uh, 2 and minus 3. All right, so let's check it out. 1 is 1 minus 7 plus 6 is correct. Now 2. 2 to the power of 3 is 8 minus 14. It's minus 6 plus 6, 0. Good. Minus 3. Minus 3 cubed is minus 27. This is plus 21, so it's minus 6. Plus 6 is equal to 0. So all three are good. There are no more than three uh, solutions because this is an equation of the third degree. So basically I found everything. Now, this is not, um, uh, I would say, a general approach. Well, there is no general approach. But this is a very peculiar solution which is based on some peculiarity of these numbers. So half of this I guessed, half of this I basically also guessed. I could have solved this a quadratic equation as a quadratic equation. x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. I can solve it using some formula. But again, I was using certain particular properties of these numbers and basically guessed it. So I wouldn't say this is a generalized approach, but what would be a generalized approach in this case? Well, probably the best way in this and the subsequent cases would be to look for integer solutions among uh, divisors of the free member, the, the last one, the constant, 6. So 6 has 1, 2, 3, 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 6 solutions. So if we will check all these 8, some of them will fit, and we will find the 3 solutions, and then we can stop. So we can get, basically go and sequentially check. One, does it work? Yes, works. Two, does it work? Yes, works. Three would not work here because this is uh, 27 minus 21, 6 plus 6, 12. Six obviously will not be as well. Minus one will not fit. Minus two will not. Minus three will fit. And the minus six will not. So that's how we can find all our three solutions. On another hand, if we have found one, which is this, you know that you can always represent this particular equation as a product equals product like x minus 1, because 1 is already found a solution. And some um, uh, polynomial of the second degree. Second, because this is the third. This is the first degree. So we have to have second degree here. So the sum of uh, exponents should be equal to 3. And obviously the first coefficient at x squared should be equal to 1, because otherwise this will not be equal to 1. I don't really need these parentheses. Right? So we need, we need equal to 1, so this should be x squared plus 2, oops, plus some kind of a mm. something like this. And now we can basically find B and C by multiplying this and comparing with this. Well, let's do it. Now, x multiplied by this would be x squared uh, plus b, sorry, x cubed plus bx squared plus cx. Minus 1 would be minus x squared minus bx minus c. And it's supposed to be equal to this, right? Now, x cubed and x cubed is fine. Now, x squared, there is no x squared here, which means b should be equal to 1. So bx squared minus x squared should be 0 because there is no x squared here. So b is equal to 1. Now, cx minus bx should be 7, minus 7, right? 
So b is equal to 1. So c must be equal to minus 6, right? So c is equal to minus 6. Then plus c would be plus 6, which corresponds to this, obviously, because 1 is the root of this polynomial, as we were already saying. So right now I can say that my original equation can be replaced with x minus 1 times x squared plus x minus 6 equals to 0. So obviously first solution is this, which we have already found, and the second solution is this, which we can actually use the formula if we don't want to guess. So this is what? Uh, 1 plus uh, 24 divided by 2, right? So it's 5 uh, plus 1 is 4 divided by 2, so it's x is equal to 2. And if it's minus 5, it's minus 6 minus 3. The same the same three solutions which I have kind of guessed before. So this is a little bit more scientific approach. Once you found one particular root of this polynomial, x is equal to 1, just by guessing, then use this to find the other two. All right, fine. So let's remember both approaches. One a little bit less scientific, which I presented the first, where I was guessing lots of different things. Um, another is uh, a little bit more scientific. Now, which one is better, by the way? Um, hard to say. I think that the element of guessing is, is very, very important. It actually is the result of your intuition, your mathematical intuition, which is basically the result of your experience. So there is nothing wrong with guessing. Uh, a little bit more well, um, procedural approach, which is the second one, well, first of all, it's still based on the guessing of the first uh, particular uh, root. And uh, again, we kind of assume that maybe there is an integer root, so we were just trying to check all the divisors. And we were lucky enough that on the first one we already got hit. Uh, but then everything else after that was relatively procedural like presentation as a product of polynomial of the first degree and the second degree, etc., etc. So I wouldn't say that one is better than another. Uh, try to be prepared for, for any kind of you know, approach, whatever you need to solve the equation. It's your ingenuity. The whole exercise of solving these equations is to develop your creativity, your ingenuity, your analytics, your logic, whatever else. So that's fine if you guess it. Uh, that means that you have this math intuition. That's okay. Now, next one. Uh, x cubed minus 5x squared plus 9x minus 9 equals to 0. Well, again, I am kind of assuming that there are integer roots. So, integer roots must be uh, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9. These are all divisors of this particular um, equation. Well, let's do the same thing as I did before. Plus or minus 1. Let's check them. That's easier, right? If it's 1, it means 1 minus 5. It's minus 4. Uh, this is 0, so that's not good. Minus 1, uh, that's minus 1 and minus 5, and minus and minus, too many, too, yeah, too many negatives, not good, not, not 0. Let's try 3. Uh, 27 minus uh, 3 square is 9, 45. So 27 minus 45, uh, that's what, minus 18, right? Minus 18. Now, uh, minus 18 uh, plus 27, that's 9, and minus 9 is 0. Okay, so 3 is good, which means we can always represent this as x minus 3 times 
x squared plus bx plus c. Again, I'm using the coefficient 1 here because the product should have the coefficient 1 at x cubed. All right, fine, that's easy. Now let's multiply this and find b and c, right? That's easy. Actually, c I can find right now. Minus 3 times c, that's the only free member without any x, and it's supposed to be equal to minus 9, right? So minus 3 times c is equal to minus 9, so c is equal to 3. We got that. All right? Now let's do the multiplication. x times this will be x cubed uh, plus bx squared plus cx, but x is equal, so it's plus 3x. Right? I'm using c is equal to 3 already. Now, minus 3x squared minus 3bx and minus 9. Again, I'm using c as 3. And this is supposed to be equal to x cubed minus 5x squared minus 9x minus 9. So, what can we do from here? Well, um, bx squared minus 3x squared, it's b minus 3, and it's supposed to be equal to minus 5. So b minus 3 is supposed to be equal to minus 5, so b is equal to minus 2. Now, how about this one? 3 and minus 2, that's 6, that's 9x. Uh, this is minus 9x, but no, something is wrong. Uh, what's wrong here? Uh, minus 9. C is equal to 3. Uh, right, something is wrong. This is 9. 3 times b, that's 6, that's 9. So why am I not... Uh, okay, let me check, let, let me check again. Um, is, three the, is 3 the root? Okay, it's 27. Minus 45, it's minus 18. Uh, minus 18 plus 27, that's 9. Yes, 3 is the root. Okay, fine. Now, minus 3 times c should be equal to minus 9, that's correct. So x cubed plus bx squared plus cx, which is 3x, right? Minus 3x squared, minus 3bx, and minus 9. So x cubed is fine. b minus 3x is equal to minus 5, uh, x squared again. Hmm. Right, so b is equal to minus 2. That's strange. How come it's not working? I'm supposed to have minus 9x. Oh, I'm sorry. This is plus, and this is plus. I have made this little mistake by writing the wrong thing here and then transfer it here. It's plus, of course, and minus 2 is correct. All right. Well, as you see, I'm making some mistakes as well. Well, although this is just a very simple one. All right, so basically we have found our equation. b equals minus 2 and c equals to 3, which means we can rewrite the right part as x minus 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 3. All right, fine. Now, is our life 
uh, easier right now? Oh, absolutely. Because one solution we have already found, which is x is equal to 3. And another solution is to solve this one, right? And the, and the roots of that thing is, uh, well, it's obviously 1 plus minus square root of 1 uh, minus uh, whatever, 12 or something. Well, obviously, this doesn't have any roots at all. Uh, well, obviously, it's seen from it's x minus 1 square plus, plus 2, right? x minus 1 square is x square minus 2x plus 1. So this is positive plus 2, I mean, no negative plus 2. So there are no uh, solutions to this equation. It cannot be equal to 0. So in this particular case, in the realm of real numbers, we have only one solution. In the realm of complex numbers, we have three solutions, one from here and two complex one real um, uh, with, 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 with real and imaginary part uh, from here. And well, let's just uh, do it. It's uh, what? It's uh, minus. It's two plus minus comma is four minus uh, four twelve. So it's uh, one plus minus eight four times two. Square square root of two. I. So that's two other solutions, which are supposed to be uh, solutions of the third degree polynomial equation. I hope I didn't make a mistake here. Well, forgive me if I did. In any case, this is just a square. This is just a, a quadratic equation, so it's okay. Principle is more important than the details of this. And the last but not least, we have the equation of the fourth degree. x to the fourth plus 4x squared, uh, no, x cubed, sorry. Minus 2x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals to zero. All right. Now, this is, again, uh, the polynomial equation of the fourth degree. And uh, we are looking for integer uh, solutions first, which means, again, we are looking among plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 9, which are divisors of the number. Well, let's check it out. I mean, we don't have any better approach. OK, start from 1. It's easier, right? So everything is basically x is equal to 1. So 1 plus 4 is 5, minus 2 is 3, minus 12, uh, minus 9, and plus 9. Well, we are so lucky. 1 is the root. OK, that's good. But uh, that's basically not the complete uh, path to solution, because 1 will allow you to reduce from the fourth to the third degree. All right? OK, let's do that. Um, so we have x minus. All right. We need something else. How about this? So we have x minus 1 times. Now, the coefficient at x cubed should be 1. Otherwise, I will not get 1 when I multiply to get x to the fourth plus, well, let's use bx squared plus cx plus d, all right? So that is supposed to be equal to this. Since 1, x1, is a solution, it's supposed to be represented in this way. All right, let's find out b, c, and d. Well, d is easier, right? Because multiplied by minus 1, it should give 9 which means d is equal to minus 9. All right, fine. Let me make my job easier. And I will put minus 9 here. That's easier, right? Fine. 
Now we have only two variables. Let's think about x cubed. x cubed can be either minus 1 or when you multiply b times x. So it's plus b. So these are only members when I open the parentheses which give you x to the third uh, to the power of 3, right? Minus x cubed and plus bx cubed. Everything else would be lower, lower degree. And that should get 4. So b is equal to 5, right? 5. b is equal to 5. And I will substitute it here because it's easier for me. Great. Now we have only one left, c. All right, let's think about x squared. How can x squared be obtained? First of all, it's x times cx, which will, will be cx squared. And secondly, minus 1 times plus 5x, which is minus 5. So we have c minus 5 coefficient at x squared. It's supposed to be equal to minus 2. So c is equal to 3. C minus 5, so it's 3. Okay, the only thing which is left is the coefficient at, 12, uh, at, at x, minus 12. We have to check if we really have it. Well, indeed, x to the first degree can be obtained from x times minus 9, which is minus 9, and also minus 9, minus 1 times 3x, which is minus 3. So it's minus 12. So this is a correct representation. Fine. So we found one particular root, x is equal to 1, and we have reduced our equation to the third degree. So now we have to solve this. So let me get rid of this. It already played its role. And let's solve this equation. Found one root and reduced the power of the equation. Okay, what should we do with this one? Well, let's try again what kind of roots this particular equation has. Again, we are looking for integers, right? So, minus 9, again. Uh, it's 9, so it's plus minus 1, plus minus 3, and plus minus 9. Well, let's try again. Let's start with 1, again. 1 plus 5, 6 plus 3, 6, uh, 9, minus 9, 0. We are lucky again. x is equal to 1 is a solution. So we have another solution, x is equal to 1. It's a double root, if you wish. Yes, a particular solution can be uh, represented twice in the polynomial, which means that this again can be divided into x minus 1 times x squared plus bx plus c. All right. Do exactly the same thing. First, we start from this free member. Minus 1 times c should be minus 9, so c should be equal to 9, right? 9. Okay. Now, so x cubed is fine, and minus 9 is fine. We have these two. Well, Let's start from 5x squared. x squared can be either x times b, x, so we will have bx squared, or minus 1. And that should be equal to 5. So b is equal to 6. b is equal to 6. And all I have to do to check if I'm right, I have to verify the coefficient at x is what I'm really looking for. Well, Coefficient at x is plus 3. Here, x can be multiplied by free member, which is 9x, or minus 1 can be multiplied by 6, which is minus 6. So 9x minus 6x is 3x, so that corresponds. Everything is fine, we don't make any mistakes. So now, we have another root, which is x is equal to 1, 
and another equation to solve. Well, uh, again, I'm guessing, but look, this is obviously x plus 3 squared, right? The x squared plus double x times, times 3, which is 6x, plus square of this. Um, but, I mean, if you want to really solve it, use the formula or whatever else. Now, what does this mean? It means that, again, we have two roots. One root is equal to x equals to minus 3. And another root is also equal to x minus 3. So we have four roots, but these are actually two different values, each of them double. We have a, we have a 1 double root and minus 3 double root, and which is fine. Altogether, we have four solutions to the equation of the fourth degree, which is correct, which is the way how it's supposed to be. Uh, these are all happen to be um, integer solutions. Fine. That, that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. Basically, I think you understand the schema which I was using here. Um, it's one of the you know approaches which you can which you can use if you would like to solve some equation of the high degree. Try to find some some root, and then using this representation as a product of x minus this root times polynomial of the lower degree, you basically make your life easier. Okay, there are some others, and uh, I might actually present uh, some other and uh, further um, lectures. But this is it for today. Uh, try to go through these solutions yourself again, and uh, don't get scared if somebody offers you uh, to solve the polynomial equation of a higher order, because most likely Solutions are relatively, you know, simple. You just have to approach it properly, and uh, if it's the problem given to you, most likely it has a relatively easy solution, not a generalized solution. There is no generalized solution in this particular case. Nobody would give you, give you this problem. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much.